the reduce function is a very powerful tool to the functional programmer. In the last video, we used reduce to help figure out the average cost of the 100 cities we're analyzing, which was a nice, simple example of using reduce, but it's important for you to know that you can do all sorts of other interesting things with reduce, and in this video, we'll use the reduce function in a very different way, which I'll describe right now. I'd like to use reduce to create an object that has properties for the cost and internet speed. Then the value for each of these properties will be an array with each city's corresponding cost and internet speed values. So why do I want to create this object? The reason is we'll use it to help score each city's cost and internet speed. You'll see exactly what I mean in a bit here. Let's create a new constant named group by prop, which we'll set to the value returned by calling Ramda's reduce function. I'll pass in a function named group by prop reducer, which we'll create in a moment. Then we'll pass in an initial accumulator value of an empty object. And lastly, we'll pass in the updated cities array. Now in the last video, we used a number here, zero, but now we're using an empty object. You'll see how this gets used in a moment. Okay, let's write the group by prop reducer function, which will take an accumulator and a city. Next, I'll create a couple constants using destructuring to unpack the cost and internet speed properties from the accumulator. Initially, the accumulator won't have any of these properties, so I'll go ahead and use the equal sign to set the default value of an empty array when the cost and internet speed properties aren't found in the accumulated value. Next, I'll go ahead and return the value you get by calling Ramda's merge function, which we've used before. I'll pass in the accumulator object as the first parameter, then I'll pass in a new object as the second parameter. Now I'll set the cost property on the second object, which will override the cost in the accumulator here. The value of cost will be what's returned by calling Ramda's append function. Append allows you to add a value to an array in an immutable way. The first parameter is the data to append to the array, which in our case will be the city's cost. The last parameter is the data to act on, which is the cost array. Next, I'll add the internet speed property, which I'll set to the value returned by calling Ramda's append function, passing in the city's internet speed and the internet speed array. Let me ask you a question. Have you noticed anything about how Ramda's function parameters are arranged? I bet most programmers don't put much thought in how to order a function's parameters, yet Ramda follows a set of rules for ordering or sequencing of a function's parameters. I've got a challenge for you. Going forward, pay attention to the sequence of arguments we're passing into Ramda's functions. Then try and figure out the pattern Ramda follows and why putting parameters in a particular sequence even matters. A bit later, we'll review what the sequence is and why Ramda orders its parameters in this way. Okay, let's go ahead and console log the group by prop constant. Now let's run this in the command line. And what we see is kind of noisy, but it's what I was going for. We've got an object with a cost property set to an array of all the cost values. Then we've got an internet speed property that's an array of all the internet speeds. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, we're gonna use it to calculate a score for each city, which is what we'll do in the next video.